Hello there and welcome to Cory Loses, where today we're going to be doing some strategy guides for the Republic. We're going to have two parts to this, the tactical and galactic level. Uh, so the galactic level is going to be a separate video where we go over some early tips on how to succeed uh, when you're playing Galactic Conquest. This video is going to be about breaking down the Republic's roster and some tips on how to fight specific CIS ships. Uh, this is something that I want to do for all the factions in Fall of the Republic and Thrawn's Revenge. Uh, so hopefully some of you find this useful. But if you would like to see the Galactic Level Guide, uh, there will be a link to that in the description. If you want to see the Tactical Level Guide, you're on it right now. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is talk about this guy, the Lucre Hulk. So there have been, more than any other ship, I feel like uh, people who are uh, asking for assistance in how in figuring out how to beat the Lucre Hulks. So we are in instant action, and we're going to take it on with five acclimators here. This is technically more than you really need, but it's still less than uh, the overall financial and pop cap value of the Lucre Hulk. So we're going to be punched above our weight here. Uh, and I'm going to show kind of the principles of how you take it out. So this would obviously just be some basic ideas that you can apply in different places. Uh, there's a few different types of Lucre Hulk, obviously. Uh, so that'll vary in the specifics of what you do. We're going against a Lucre Hulk battle carrier right now. Uh, but if you turn this on here, the main thing is that Lucre Hulks are round. Now, I know that may seem like a, a surprise, a big shock, but the main thing you want to do is make sure your ships don't do what mine are doing right now. And so we are going to turn on power to weapons with all those. This one is going to be taking the brunt of it right now. But the main thing about the Luger Hawks is, yeah, they are round. So each of these weapons has a distinct firing arc. It's not able to direct all its firepower in every direction. So weapons here can't shoot back here. Weapons back here can't shoot up here. So you want to make sure that you are in range of as few weapons as possible. And even the fact, even the amount that our ships are spreading out right now isn't ideal. Because the more you have them concentrated, the less the Lucre Hulk is going to be able to shoot. The fewer of its weapons that are actually going to be active. Uh, so we've got five of our levelers specifically type for this. Uh, there are some decent anti-fighter capabilities on the on the battle carrier, which means that the Lucre Hulk or the Acclimator carrier types are going to be a little bit weaker against it. Uh, if you're actually up against the battle carrier. Then, if you're sticking with the uh, acclimators, then you'll probably actually find the the carrier type acclimators allow you to do a bit more damage from range uh, compared to the compared to the leveler types or the assault loadouts rather. But now that we have that pretty much down, we did lose an acclimator. Uh, but again, if I was playing this better, then I'd probably be able to avoid even that. Uh, we're mostly going for the demonstration here. Uh, so what you want to do is focus down some of the uh, some of the outer ring that's facing you. So you're not necessarily just going for the highest value target overall. You're going for what's going to be a threat to you in the moment. Uh, giving you an attack order is not going to be super helpful. So it looks like it's kind of turning this way. So if we focus a little bit more on weapons on these sides and we give every uh, every acclimator a different hard point to shoot, that's also pretty important. Don't be afraid to pause in the middle of a battle uh, to give some extra orders. Then you're going to find yourself able to take out, especially with these turbo lasers, uh, you'll be able to take out a lot of the damage on this side of the Lucre Hulk all at once. And soon it won't even be able to shoot us on this side. So the more you familiarize yourself with like the positions of some of these hard points, the more you're going to be kind of comfortable with doing this kind of thing, the more you're going to be able to execute on it. Honestly, going for the fighter bays in this is, uh, in this particular setup, is probably not the, the most optimized way to do it. But you can see we've done... A lot of damage there and it still has a lot of health but it's not going to be able to shoot us because none of the weapons that it has are facing this direction anymore 
So battle carriers are, yeah, battle carriers are a little bit worse than the battleships. Uh, but you can apply similar methods to it, where you kind of want to make sure you're occupying as little space around it as possible. I've seen some people talk about like trying to surround the Lucre Hawks or flank them. That is really not what you want to do with this ship. This ship is like pretty uniquely suited for taking on a bunch of stuff around it. Like there's a lot of other stuff that has like broad side arcs that would be good at that, but the Lucre Hulk is pretty split between all four kind of firing arcs compared to everything else. But yeah, so that is that's the general principles of how you want to approach taking out Lucre Hawks. Again, I had five. You can probably do it. You can basically do it with four or maybe even three. And I lost one because I was kind of careless. Uh, but if you're trading one Acclimator for a Lucre Hulk, you're probably not in bad shape there either. Like, you don't need to play super optimally against the AI. Uh, so these are kind of just basic principles that you can start applying into your own games. If you ever want to... Uh, kind of test out different fleet strategies. You can go, we're just going to go back to the main menu here. You can go into game modes and historical battles, and you're going to go to any of these instant action maps, Mission log and you updated. just start them up. And you're able to spawn in ships for uh, with either faction. Uh, so we have the CIS menu here. We have the Republic one here. You can see that's the faction icon. That's what you're looking for. And it can be a little bit harder to see against the planets. Uh, but you get the mini-map icon as well, so you can just see it there. But you also have the option here to spawn either ship for either side. So if you click on this button, that's going to make it so that ships, no matter Upgrade who they belong to, spawn for the Confederacy. If you do this one, it's so ships, no matter who they belong to, will spawn for the Galactic Republic. Then this button resets it. And you can even get some, uh, some target dummies to kind of see how accuracy works for different weapons or... Uh, health and hull modifiers, what the damage output is, the effective damage output. But yeah, so we're going to go over some of the Republic's Upgrade roster here, complete. or a good chunk of the Republic's roster. Upgrade the big thing that I would tell people, though, complete. is do not sleep on two ships in particular, uh, especially early game, because that's usually when people are struggling the most is early game in Galactic Conquest. And there are two types of ships that are going to be kind of your best friends uh, during those phases. One is this guy. So the Invincible is an obscure ship, but it is a pretty good ship. It isn't, like, it isn't going to be uh, the key to your victories forever, but they can put out some really decent damage and take a good pounding. So if you're looking for something that's going to need to tank for a Lucre Hawk really early on, then... If you have one of these guys supported by a couple acclimators, you're in pretty good shape. So don't don't be afraid to put out some invincibles, or especially you start with a couple. So using your starting forces uh, is usually a how you use your starting forces is usually a pretty key element, and especially with what I talked about in the galactic level strategies, uh, making sure that you are prioritizing your targets properly. Uh, you can get a lot done with just some acclimators and some invincibles. With the acclimators, you have the assault loadout, which is this guy, and you have the carrier loadout early on. You get the acclimator two later, but these two are kind of going to be your uh, your workhorses early on in the game. The assault loadout doesn't have as many fighters; it's still got a decent complement, but it is going to be putting out a good amount of damage. It has a lot of physical damage, so the power to weapons ability is really good on it. Uh, it has a lot of missiles. It has uh, some some quad turbo lasers there, like it. It's not a slouch. It can put out some good damage even later on in the game, so don't sleep on those. Uh, obviously, when you get into later parts of the game, the two ships that you're really going to be relying on are probably going to turn into these two. So if you're starting in a later era, Venators and Victories are going to be quite good. But something that uh, usually gets kind of misrepresented is the role that the Venator is going to play. It is quite good in most capacities, but its main role, uh, it's going to be able to put out some good damage, and it's going to be uh, putting out mostly fighters. That is where a lot of its damage is going to be coming from. So make sure you're protecting them. Sending them to like 1v1 or Lugerhulk is not going to end well for you. 
Uh, if you're looking for something that's more of a direct ship-to-ship -ship combatant, the Victory is more in that line. Uh, but if you have these guys working together, uh, you're going to get a lot of damage out of both of them. Uh, the Victory is going to be like marginally more defensive than the than the Venator is. It's going to get less fighters out, but it's also another thing where you're going to get a lot of damage out of it. So if you have some powered weapons going from, uh, from a VSD and maybe supported by an Acclimator Assault Loadout, then you're going to be stripping through stuff pretty quickly. You can usually start towards the end of the game uh, swapping out some of your Acclimator Assault Loadouts for VSDs, but if you're on a budget, there's... There's never a... It's never wrong to build the Acclimator Assault Loadouts. I really like them personally. Uh, but if we're going to look at the rest of the roster here... So... The... The Carex are going to be kind of all-rounders for you. They have some anti-fighter capabilities, uh, which they're not fantastic at. They have some anti-ship capabilities, which they're not fantastic at. But having a couple thrown in for support, especially if you have them near uh, a Venator or a Victory, they're going to be able to do some fighter screening for them while they focus on doing kind of your real damage. But you also have another pretty versatile ship Upgrade in the progress. Dreadnoughts where they're not quite what you'd be familiar with from the Galactic Civil War era. Uh, they're a lot more laser-oriented, uh, which makes them... They're kind of like... If the assault loadout for the for the Acclimator is kind of like this, a similar role to the VSD, but a step below, then the Carrick and Dreadnoughts are almost filling that kind of role. But there are a few versions of it. So you're going to have a couple of PDF Dreadnoughts at the start uh, of the start of most games. They're not very heavily armed. They're not the best ships... But you can upgrade them into your Dreadnought Carriers, which are going to put out a few more fighters, uh, which can be handy to have around. But then you have the actual uh, Dreadnought Heavy Cruiser, uh, which will be available in some places. Uh, when you can get these, they're going to be good supportive damage for you. Uh, again, backing up a few of these other ships, you're going to get a pretty good value out of that. So the Tector, the Imperator, and the Secutor are ships that you can get if you go down the Order 66 path. They're really good for a few reasons. But one thing that's uh, important to keep in mind in Fall of the Republic is that any ship with an ion cannon is actually really good. Because uh, ion cannons are quite strong. And you can see they're the, they're the kind of solid icons. ISDs have them. Bulwarks have them for the CIS. Uh, but they're very rare during the Clone Wars, and they will really help strip shields. Uh, the CIS has a frigate here called the Munifex. Upgrade in progress. So these guys are pretty tiny, Upgrade complete. and they may seem non-threatening, but when you see these guys, you should prioritize something on killing them. Because if you look here, they have two light turbo lasers and two light ion cannons. They're not taking up a huge amount of pop cap. Uh, they're putting out a fighter squadron. And they're doing ion damage, which again is very important to make sure you keep track of. Uh, if you have a couple Arquitens, then you're going to be able to kind of task them towards killing some of these uh, some of these Munifexes. If you have maybe a group of three, they'll be able to kill one pretty quickly. Uh, but one of the other things that people tend to struggle with a little bit is how they're supposed to use some of the anti-fighter ships. So you have the CR-90s, which can do that. You also have the LACs, which can do that. Uh, but keep in mind, these are relatively cheap, and they take up very little pop gap. So in 200 pop fleet, you can have like 10 of these guys, maybe even more. And in an era that's as fighter-heavy as the CIS, the more, or as fighter-heavy as the Clone Wars, the more of these you have, the better. So 10 may sound like a lot, but it's actually quite few for how effective they can be if you're using a lot of them. If you have like 20 of them in, an act, in a full pop cap fleet, uh, you'll probably get a lot of value out of that as well. Possibly even more, depending on what you're going up against. If you're going up against like Luke Hulk carriers or captor carriers, which are... Um, so Luke Hulk's obviously here, then there's the captor. Not to be confused with the Auxilia, but like Providences will also put out some fighters. Uh, the CIS is a very fighter-heavy faction. The Republic kind of is as well. But the way I typically will use my uh, my fighters... I'm just going to... There. 
See, it's dead. It's not going to be a problem. But the way I will typically use my uh, my anti-fighter is I will park them behind my fleet because if they are in a position where they're going to be attacked, then they'll die pretty quickly. Uh, but if you have them sitting behind a capital ship, then usually the AI will still send some... Uh, they'll be doing like fighter and bomber passes on your ships. Uh, so if you have, it's going to be a little bit laggy right now because we have so many of our ships spawned. But when they have, say, a swarm of fighters that's coming at your stuff this way, they're going to get one successful runoff on one of these ships. But then those bombers and fighters are going to fly into a cloud of our anti-fighter corvettes. The other thing you're going to probably want to do a bit is, depending on what you're using, if you're using a lot of acclimator carriers, uh, then you're probably going to have a lot of fighters yourself. You're going to be relying a lot on your uh, fighters' damage output. And you can kind of see what I was talking about earlier with the Lucre Hulk's damage, where I've got it surrounded, so all of its weapons are doing a lot of damage to a lot of targets right now. This is like best-case scenario for a Lucre Hulk, is it's using every single weapon it has. It's going to die relatively quickly, but it was able to take out a lot of other stuff. So this is the situation you never want to be in with a Lucre Hulk. Uh, but yeah, so uh, so if you're using a carrier-heavy strategy, you're going to be sending a lot of your fighters in to support your bombers, clear out enemy fighters while your bombers do a lot of the damage to capital ships, uh, at which point you'll probably want to move your, uh, your anti-fighter ships up a little bit. It's going to be a bit riskier, uh, but if you're really playing forward with your fighters and bombers, then having the opportunity to kind of clear out Coming the enemy on. fighters that are, and interceptors that are going to be trying to clear out your bombers is going to be a bit more valuable. So try to make sure that you're going in when they're going to have a little bit of cover, but make sure you're kind of playing with their speed and their range. Because uh, they have, on top of being really fast, uh, they tend to also have full 360 degree firing arcs. Uh, just as a kind of quality of life thing, so you can more easily track what you're doing. But that does mean you can park them backwards and have them ready to just leave whenever they need to while still kind of doing their job. So that's kind of how you use a lot of those ships. The other thing to keep in mind is that there are some units that may seem like they are meant for certain situations. Uh, like, let's say we have a subjugator here. Upgrade complete. Now, a lot of people's natural assumption is that the subjugator, as a super ship, you fight that with super ships. But really, in the, in the game, when you are fighting a single large ship, you want to fight it with as many others, uh, as, usually as many fighters as you can possibly do. But with the subjugator in particular, you want to fight it with uh, as many ships as possible in general. So where is our spawner here? So, if you want to talk about ships that are like kind of in similar roles for each action, the Praetor or the Mandator, Mandator 1 or 2, will kind of seem like what's going to be doing similar things for your fleet, which is mostly true. But the, uh, the Subjugator is able to kind of duel much better than other ships will be able to. Because the Mega, the Ion Pulse Cannon, is going to get most of its damage out if it is hitting one target. And on top of doing a lot of damage, it's going to stun a target for 15 seconds. Uh, so you're losing a lot of your firepower if you are using the Mandator or the Praetor up against something like this. They'll still, you're not necessarily going to lose to it like in every case. But if you're talking about like the most efficient way to handle these guys, then you can see just doing that one pass with these bombers did a lot of damage there. If you have a couple Venators supporting that, or Acclimator, Assault Variants, or Victories, uh, you may end up losing one or two ships, but again, you gotta just decide what the value, or what the trade-off you're willing to make for that is. Uh, but if you are just kind of doing uh, a Praetor or a Mandator against it, for one thing, that's harder to get into that situation where you're gonna have those and enough fleets to kind of make sure that they're gonna be what goes up against the Subjugator when instead you could be using a carrier-heavy strategy against them, which is going to be a bit more effective. Uh, but you're giving up a lot of your effective pop cap. If you have one, like, 84 pop cap thing here, 
or 136 pop cap thing here because uh, they're possibly going to have like uh, a subjugator and maybe a lucre hulk and then they're going to have a lot of fighter damage coming out where the subjugator just has to stun the praetor or stun the mandator and then the lucre hulk can just kind of use it and its fighters along with some of the other weapons from the subjugator to do a lot of damage so that's kind of what you want to do is yeah. make sure that when you are fighting up against a subjugator uh, that you are primarily going to be using fighters and bombers. So those are just some tips to help succeed, especially early on as the Republic and fall of the Republic. We are going to be again doing this with the CIS and going over some more tips on how to play them a bit more effectively. Again, if you want to see some tips on the galactic level, there is another video uh, explaining what goes on there. Uh, that'll be linked in the description, or I'll make a full playlist with these guys. And I want to do the same thing in Thrawn's Revenge. Either way, hope this is helpful. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope to see you next time. Bye.